So last weekend, I spoke at the All American Print Supply open house, and I'm gonna play some of my presentation for you guys. So uh, enjoy it. My name is Alan Wade. I'm a YouTube influencer, and I specialize in teaching people how to supplement or replace their income using various pieces of garment decorating equipment. And I encourage people like us, you know, I don't know where you guys are from or, or what your backgrounds are, but I believe that each individual household, all that we need to live a better life is a little bit of extra income. And these machines and these technologies that are available to us can allow us to earn those extra incomes to make our lifestyles a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable, right? And whether you plan on starting a business or you just plan on buying the equipment for yourself to make produce products for yourselves or for your family members or for your friends, it's still gonna give you a return in the long run as long as you use it properly. Now the, big, the hardest part about using this equipment properly is getting over that learning curve that each piece of equipment has and building up the confidence to believe that you know how to use the equipment good enough to make that purchase. Because these are large purchases that we're making, right? These are large amounts of money that we're considering. But at the end of the day, let's face it, how many of you guys ever had a motorcycle or a nice car? Or how many of you guys go out to eat uh, multiple times throughout the week, two or three times? If that's any of you guys, then you got the money, right? You got the money. And this money is, would be spent more wisely if you bought something that would make you money, to put money back in your pocket in the long run. All right, so yeah, one of my accomplishments on my YouTube channel is I've got over 100,000 subscribers on my channel. And I basically do videos on all these machines, teaching you in an intricate way how to use them so you're confident enough to make that purchase. All right, so what is right for your business, DTF or DTG. Now, how many of you guys have businesses or small businesses? Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, the rest of you guys are just like thinking about starting businesses or, or um, are interested, what, what, what are you thinking about? Do you have a business or no? Just getting started. Just getting started. Do you have any equipment yet? Uh, vinyl cutter. Vinyl cutter, okay, okay. And you don't count. <laughs> what, what about you? Sublimation, okay. I sublimation and DTF. Awesome. And vinyl. And vinyl, okay. You guys? Sublimation and DTF. Okay. What DTF printers do you currently have? Okay. The A3 plus R? Yeah. Okay. And screen printing, embroidery. Oh yeah, by the way, if anybody's not following me on YouTube, let me go back to that slide right here. Okay, so A Dub Productions on YouTube. Go ahead, like, follow, subscribe, and share it out with everybody else. Awesome. A little bit of everything. Right. Oh, the big one. The big DTG machine. No, I thought that's the DTG. Okay. But you can, you can do DTF in that machine. Yes, you can. Yep. Like yes. Okay. Yep, F2100. And yourself? Uh, sublimation. Sublimation? Okay. And you don't count either. You're, you're a dealer. You got everything. He's got everything. The dealer's got everything. All right, so what's right for your business, DTG or DTF? That's a tough question, right? Because they both have their pros and their cons, but they're kind of like intertwined with each other's with each other in different ways because you can do obviously DTF on a DTG printer but DTF printers are specialized to make DTF transfers right so you got your DTF right here you got the prestige a2 uh, R2 that they have now you have the A4 printer you have the the um, L2 and the XL2 so there's different size DTF printers so there's a lot of options when it comes to DTF, right? Right, a lot of options. Whether you have a small space in your home or whether you have a production studio, there's a lot of options for us. So then you have the F2100 and then you have the larger DTG printer. I forgot the name of it because I don't even look at it because it's huge, right? It's huge. So that's like if you 
have a legit business. Like I look at that DT, DTG printer like, if I was Nike, I'd probably have this. I don't know, I don't know. It's huge and it's expensive, right? So most of us that are just getting started or have small home-based businesses, we're not looking at that because that's outside of our price point. And maybe one day we'll grow up to that, right? But for the most part, if you're looking at DTG, you're probably looking at the F2100, right? So these are some things that you might want to consider when trying to decide what machine you want to buy, right? What type of business are you? What type of business are you, all right? Um, are you the type of business that you're gonna sell the finished product? Are you gonna sell, do retail sales, right? Because retail sales demands a higher price point for that finished garment. You know, we buy a shirt for, you know, anywhere from two to five bucks. You put an image on it and you sell that product, right? Are you in retail sales? Do you sell, you know, do you have your own brand, right? Do you uh, uh, produce products for, for other brands? Are you in retail sales? And, or are you a supplier? Do you um, offer trans, or do you offer transfers to other small businesses um, and, and give them supplies that they need to help their businesses thrive? Okay, so these are main, um, the main two points that I want you to consider when deciding which route you wanna go. Because each of these, whether it be DTF or DTG, solves a, solves a problem, right? So you have to decide what you feel the most comfortable doing and what you wanna do, right? So are you in retail sales or are you a supplier, all right? Um, both have their pros and their cons, by the way, all right? So, so we'll, we'll get into some of those later and you guys can add to the pros and the cons, right? So we're gonna play a little small game right here. But, so we, we walked around, we saw the different pieces of equipment, right? We, uh, is, can I have a DTG shirt and a DTF shirt if you have one available? A DTG and a DTF shirt? Okay, so we saw that there, there's one right there. That's, that looks like DTG right there, right? Is that DTG? Yes, of course it is. How do I know that? And look, you got some right there. That, that's DTF, right? How do I know that, right? So to give you a little bit of insight, I own two DTG printers and two DTF printers. So I'm, not, I'm just not up here talking out of my, you know, behind here. Like sometimes people get up and it's okay to listen to people give, talk about stuff that they don't have, but no, I actually use the equipment. I actually have the equipment. So I'm, 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 I'm legit. I, I'm, I'm authorized to give you this information, right? <laughs> All right, so. This is DTG. You don't got, I already know. You know, right. DTG right there? This is DTF right here? That was DTG. I know, I was about to say, that doesn't look good. Like yeah, that's DTF, okay. So, all right. So, from you walking around today and you looking at these two columns right here, what process, direct-to-garment printing or direct-to-film printing, do you think takes up the least space? Because one of our concerns is, as small businesses is, can I fit this thing in my house? Can I fit this thing in my small workshop that I have because I have other supplies in there? What option do you think takes up the least amount of space? You think they're tied? Okay. Depend right, depending on which setup. But remember, DTF, we have different setups to choose from. DTG, we got the big setup and the bigger setup. <laughs> and, and the flip side is, we didn't even think about pre-treat stations. Did you guys even see a pre-treat station yet? Everybody, it comes with the Wagner spray gun, but guess what? If you wanna make it efficient, if you wanna do it the right way, you gotta get another big box to go with that, right? If you go with the smaller DTF, you got the printer, and then you got the baker to make it efficient, right? So with that being said, I would say that direct to film wins that arguably, right? Because we, you know. Second, we got two shirts right here in case you guys didn't feel, right? Because we like to feel stuff. Which one has the better feel? Which one has a better feel in your opinion? DTG. DTG? You already DTG? That's, that's DTF and that's DTG right there. Which one has a better feel to you? 
Everybody saying DTG. All right? All right, so there we go. I'm like, whew, thank God you guys agree with me. <laughs> DTG has a better feel. All right, which process is easier to do, right? Because we're simple, we want things to be simple, simplified. We want to make money. We want to start, we want to get going, and we want to make money right away. Which one is easier to use? DTF? Yeah. D are we, what, do you, what do you guys think? DTG? Okay. DTG? Okay. Now, why, why do you say DTF? I don't like pre-treat. Okay. So pre-treat, that's a... Right, right. And why do you say DTF? I mean, what, yeah. DTG. why do you say DTG? Just push the button. That's not it. What do you got to do before you push the button? There's a whole process before pushing the button. You just, you, 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 you got to pre-treat the shirt before you push the button. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. You can buy the RTP shirts or the, uh, yeah. One day in the future, every shirt will come pre-treated already, maybe. Who knows? But as of right now, as of right now, where's my clicker go? As of right now, I'm going to say that the easiest to do is DTF because DTF printers are just printers. They just print, you put this, it's like a regular printer. You load in the paper and you load in the image just like your regular standard printer. That's to remove all the complications from your head. Once you get your printer set up, take that Word document, put it in the software, press print. Of course, there's more things you got to do. You got to, you know, dial in the colors and little stuff like that. But for the most part, it's just a printer, right? So I would think the DTF is the simpler process. You, have to cure it you also have to cure it. With a heat press or what do you do? Uh, you you got the options. The most people, like myself, are gonna uh, cover it with a cover sheet and cure it on a DT, uh, on a uh, heat press. For 10 seconds, 15 seconds? No, it should be a little bit more than that. Maybe like 30 seconds or so. But you can also put it through a conveyor dryer if, you, if you're if you lucky enough to have a big conveyor dryer. what they do in the, in the shop? Did they cure it? They had to cure it. Because if it comes out of the DC, if it comes out of the machine, it's still wet. So you have to cure it. Yeah, you have to cure it. Yeah. Oh, a few seconds? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, so simple. Here at the show, take it home and try it. You gotta, you gotta pre-treat. And pre-treat is a whole situation that you have to kind of like master. I, I'm here to tell you the truth. Pre-treating is not difficult, but it is kind of like has its learning curve within itself, right? Um, if you put down too much and you dry the shirt, you can potentially put too much down and get a box, right? If you put down too little, your prints aren't going to come out as vibrant as you would like. If you miss a spot, then it's going to be great here and not great. So there's, there's a few variables, right? So I'm going to say, um, okay, good up. yeah, easier to do. Okay, okay, I jumped ahead of myself. Which one do you think looks the best? I jumped ahead of myself there. Which one do you think looks the best? I mean, this is a, this this is great looking to me. This this line looks fantastic, but. That that looks like uh, that looks like the store, right? <laughs> We're all comparing it to Macy's and stuff like that. Which one do you think looks better? I think Macy's will be more like uh, right, right or wrong, right? Okay, so DTG. I'm glad. Whew. Once again, right? Exactly. By the way, um, this shirt that I have on right here was made on a Prestige A3 Plus R. I would uh, take it off and pass around, but it's not that type of show. So, sorry ladies. <laughs> but yeah, I made this on a A3, Prestige A3 Plus R. So, um, people like it. People like it, people buy it. So, DTF is definitely a valid, you know, solution. All right, what about two businesses in one? Technically, they both are, but which one is legitimately two businesses in one? Everybody's saying DTG, I'm confused. DTF, right? Because DTF, DTF is made for making films, but you can take that film and you can make a finished product. D 
DTG is primarily made, I mean, it's called direct-to-garment. It's primarily made to go to direct-to-garment, but you can put a film on it. It's not called DTF, it's called DTG. So sometimes the answer is right in front of our faces and we like overthink it too much. DTG, direct-to-garment, direct-to-film. So technically this is two businesses in one. Arguably, both can do the same thing, but if you wanna be more efficient in making your films and if you, wanna, if you value your time, you need a DTF printer. That's why it's important to decide what type of business you wanna be, right? Whether you wanna make DTFs, right? And you wanna make those shirts as well as sell those transfers to produce more income for yourself. But if you're producing DTFs with DTG and that's your primary purpose, you wanna do, make transfers and you got a DTG machine, you're gonna be there all day, right? Because you press the print one time and you're only making one DTF at a time and guess what, you can't walk away. With my DTF machine, I could walk away and come back, walk away, come back every 10 minutes or so and check up and make sure everything's fine. With my DTG machine, it prints out, take it out, take it over here, one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you're gonna be there all day. Somebody orders 50 transfers, <laughs> that's your life, you know? So um, what about the most consistent? Which one is the most consistent? DTF? No, but no, any DTGs? DTF. I would say DTF is the most consistent because again, it's just a printer. It's just a printer. As long as that print head is clean, as long as you know everything's functioning right, it just prints onto the transfer. With DTG, once again, you gotta deal with the pre-treat machine, you gotta spray down some pre-treat solution, and even if you have a, um, a pre-treat station, you have human error involved. So when there's human error involved, there's a possibility that you can mess up and you can say, oh, this thing doesn't work. When actually you put that shirt a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left so that part didn't get sprayed and you're gonna call it, hey, principal, your DTF printer, your, your, your pre-treat machine doesn't work. But no, you don't work. <laughs> so the, the, the machine is a machine. It's, it does what you tell it to do. A lot of the times we blame the mistakes on the product when actually we need to figure out maybe it's something I'm doing wrong. So there is the human error involved, the human hand involved with uh, as far as the consistency, consistency that you get more so DTG than DTF. So I would say DTF is the most consistent. All right, and which one demands the higher price point? Which one can you sell the product to and get the most money for? DTG? DTG, I would say so too. Look at this, look at this. This just, this just screams like, look at the gradient and look at the phase, look at the detail. Don't get me wrong, like I said, this is great. This is great. You could sell it. I think they probably should have put a bigger image on here. Maybe that would have been, you know, done DTF a little bit more justice, but um, DTG wins that too. So you have some decisions to make. And like I said, I'm not gonna sit here and try to make your minds up for you because I can't, because they both have pros and cons, but I can tell you some things that to consider and it's up to you guys to determine what business model that you want that's gonna work for you the best, all right? So, DTF, let's go over some pros in DTF. You got the L2 right here from DTF Station, AKA All, All American Prince of Co. And um, a larger customer base. Now. DTF machines make DTF transfers. How many transfer companies do you guys know of? A lot, right? Name a few transfer companies. Just spit, spit, out, spit out a few transfer companies. Supercolor? What? TKO? Look, names all over. So there's a large customer base out there of people looking to buy transfers already. So if you buy a DTF printer, it's just up to you to infiltrate some of that customer base and get some of that money in your pocket, right? Customers are already available to buy DTF transfers. Not to say that DTG is a bad option because you guys already said this has a better feel and you can make more money doing this. See how, see why this is so complicated and you have to make up your mind for yourselves? Like I said, I'm not gonna, I can't make up my mind, your mind for you because both of them have their pros and their cons. So DTF, has a large customer base already that you guys don't have to work as hard. It's just up to you to creatively figure out 
how to infiltrate some of those customers and get the, those dollars in your pocket. You might want to consider um, offering lower prices or offering specials and stuff like that to, you know, or offering gang sheets. That's a popular term nowadays, gang sheets, right? But what's a gang sheet? A gang sheet is just a bunch of images grouped in one. So if I'm, if I'm selling, uh, if I have a certain price point and I'm saying I'm giving you, I'm selling a, a 13 inch sheet, 13 by 15 for this amount, you just send me the image and I'll print it on. If you send me 10 images on that 13 by 15 or whatever, I'm gonna print it. If you send me one image, I'm gonna print it. So what's a gang sheet? It's, like, it's the same thing, right? But gang sheet is a popular term that everybody using. So maybe you might wanna say, hey, I sell gang sheets. When actually <laughs> it's the same thing, right? So uh, large customer base for DTFs. It's easy to train an employee to use a DTF machine. And as a small business or as any business, I would highly suggest that one of your goals be to have an employee. Not only is it a good thing for the economy in a whole and our ecosystem and how this whole American system works, but it's great for you because what you wanna do after you get this expensive machine is even when you're not there, you want that expensive machine to be producing. So. You want your system to be foolproof. You want your system to be dummy proof. You want your system to be employee proof. So easier to train an employee to just print, right? Because most people know how to print on printers already. So it's easier to train um, employees on DTF printers, all right? Um, what about, what do you guys think about this? Is this arguable, less maintenance on DTF machines? Or do you think DTFs and DTGs have the same amount of maintenance? Based off of what you guys have learned today, the same? Same? Depending on the huh? Depending on the printer. Depending Depending on the printer? Yeah. What about you guys? What do you think? Everybody says they're about the same. I think that DTF has way less maintenance. I have both machines, by the way. Some of you guys might have both machines too, but in my experience, owning both D a DTF and DTG printers, DTF has a lot less maintenance than DTG. I can leave my DTF state, my DTF uh, machine sit. They won't tell you this, but my DTF machines are sitting right now. I did nothing to them. I turned them off. I left a little toggle switch on the back on so it can do its white ink agitation automatically. But my DTG printer, no, I can't leave it sit for that long. Like I think maybe four days, and after four days, I'm a little concerned. But there's no self agitation system in the DTG printer. Every single day you're instructed to pick up your, take your white ink cartridges out and shake them up. That's like, like, like that is it. I call it a baby, it's a baby. So DTG actually requires a lot more maintenance than DTF. Those ink heads will clog up a lot faster, especially the white inks in particular because of that self agitation system that the DTF printers have built in that, that F2100 doesn't do, right? So, I don't know. Which DTF do you have? I have Rico, the Rico R1000. I have two of those. Right, now the F2100, does that have a self-agitation system? No. Right, it does not. So you still have to shake up the white cartridges. That's even more. That's even more, right? That's a lot of variables. Not to say it's a bad system, because I know people that have F2100s. I don't know if you guys uh, watch Angela Jasmine on YouTube. She runs um, uh, F2100s, and she has great results. And I even talked to her at the trade show, and she said, you should go with this machine. But guess what? If you, any of you guys watch my videos, I got a brand new Rico R1000 for $4,500 on the used market, and it was brand new. So guess what? You know, as a small business owner, you got to go with, you, you know, the best deal. So, and it's been working ever since, right? And plenty of the issues that people complain about, I didn't, I don't have those issues, right? So less maintenance goes to DTF, I think. All right. What about easy to use? That's kind of like, it's easy to train employee, easy to use. It's easier to use because the whole process from start to finish, DTG requires pre-treat, where as though you're just loading paper, you're just loading transfers in and, and pressing print. So it's easier to use this machine, uh, DTF machine. More options, there's more options available. You can know you can buy all the way from the small 
right? The small DTF printer all the way up to the large DTF printer, right? The, the, the L2, and they even have bigger ones than that, but there's more options available, right? There's no small desktop DTG printer, right? That would be, I wish that was a thing, right? A, a small DTG printer that prints 13 by 19, that's what we need, right? Hey, we're, 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 hey, we need a small DTG printer that prints 13 by 19, right? <laughs> but all those other printers will be sitting on a rack forever, right? But yeah, more options when it comes to this. And you know, you get the two in one, you can make the transfers as well as you can uh, make the shirts. All right, small DTF, big DTF. And what about it transfers onto more substrates? Now, this is arguably, this is an argument point too because on your DTG machine, you can make a DTF which can do the same thing, print on all the substrates, but what it's meant to do once again is to print onto shirts, direct to garment, all right? Now, DTG. Pros, retail ready quality print, right or wrong? Ready to sell, put, it on. put your tag on there. Macy's, if nobody buys it, Walmart, Target, right? Right, retail ready, I think. This, people love it, don't get me wrong, I, I sell these but Still great. Make the print large and it's highly compatible. Competitive, right? Com com it's comparable, but overall, DTG wins. All right? Retail ready print. Demands a higher price point. You guys already said that earlier. Because it's retail ready, you're going to sell this more than you're going to sell that. Right? Not to say that there's not a demand for this because we already talked about there's a demand. See how this is confusing? See how, see how, see how you, hey, just when I thought my mind was made up. You thought a few slides ago, you're like, okay, I get the DTF printer. Now you're like, damn, I get the, right? This is not a, 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 a easy decision. So you know what I say? Right, it, it, sorry. <laughs> Told you this wasn't gonna be easy. Sorry about that, man. So he said, no, I have my mind made up. No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't hurt me when you get out there. Hey man, it's, either, either way is not a bad decision. Once again, the determining factor is you gotta think about what kind of business am I? What do I wanna do? Do I wanna be retail ready? Do I wanna be sell a product? Do I wanna start my brand? Do I wanna um, help other people start their brands? Or do I wanna produce the transfer to sell to other people so they can start them. Both, I'm gonna tell you right now, when I got my DTF printer, my business just went through the roof with people ordering DTFs. Not a bad option. Retail ready, you guys already said, it demands a higher price point. Not a bad option, right? This is not a, this is not a easy decision. Both of them, very profitable. You gotta have the customer base that's ready to buy this product, right? The customer base is already, is already there. Not to say that the customer base is not already there for this because I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna tell you guys something, something else in a slide coming up, all right? So, people like shirts produced by DTG machines. You guys like this shirt more than this shirt. I don't know why, they're both great shirts, but hey, you guys said it yourselves. So people like shirts produced on a DTG machine. It's like I was reading your minds, like, uh, <laughs> right? So, um, Handles images with gradient fades better. Can we all agree with that? You see how that black is just fading into nothing? This can do it, but not as good, right? Not as good. Are you, are you leaning back heavily more into DTG now? Like he's looking like... <laughs> Handles the fades better, right? Because this is a different process. It's a different process. Not to say it's bad, because I do have some great... Then there's some tricks that you can do when you get proficient in uh, graphic design software, it's like, you know, uh, rasterization to help it handle it better, but it's not gonna be quite as good as DTG, all right? And um, people without a computer, once you, once you print out the file, that file saves onto the DTG machine, so you don't have to have a computer connected to it all the time, whereas though the DTF machines, you have to have a computer connected to it. So, you can run your business standalone with just the DTG once that file is on the machine, lives on the machine. So I, I'd say that's a pro. That's a pro because your computer, and like me, 
if you go to my work, you like, how many computers do you have, dude? Like, I got like three Macs and, and, and three PCs. It's overkill. But some, if, you're, if you're in a home-based business, you probably have, might have one computer, Mac, or PC. So this could be a benefit for you. Um, once you print that first file out, you can take your computer to go do something else and have your production still going on the DTG machine because that file lives on the DTG machine. That could be a pro for you, all right? So these are some things to consider for DTG. The DTF things to consider were great too, but so is this, DTG. It's not gonna be easy. So now this right here is a real life example. This was me earlier this year at an event, a Juneteenth event. And all these shirts that you see right here, what do you guys think, DTG or DTF? DTF? Yeah. Correct. With the exception of that, that was done on a DTG the year prior to. Every other shirt, DTF. And that looks a little DTF-ish, right? DTF-ish is that word? It's the word now. D that looks a little DTF-ish, but that's, that was produced on a DTG machine. Right. Everything else, I mean, that was produced on DTG. Everything else is DTF. So in your business, a technique that you can use. It's actually, all these techniques are actually common sense when you think about it. Um, in both markets, in order to sell a product, um, what the problem that people have most of the time is finding people to buy their products, right? There are places that you can go where people come to buy products, like vending events. <laughs> people come with the intention to buy vending stuff. So try to find vending events where people come to vend, right? They're not coming for a hot dog, they're not coming, unless it's a hot dog, unless it's a food vending event, right? But certain events that happen all year round, people go to with the intentions of spending money. Easy to find customers when you start thinking about things in a way that makes sense. What market can I attach my business to where that customer base already lives, right? Easiest way to make money, right? You know, all types of businesses want to look more professional, you know, so they need uniforms, you know, whether it be a, a startup company or an existing company, you know, give somebody a product, give one of these small businesses uh, or big businesses one of your products one, uh, with their logo on it for free, give them two of them, right? If they already have a vendor later on down the line, I promise you, I promise you, because how do I know? Because I've done it before. Later on the line, it might not be to produce their stuff, but later on the, down the line, they will consider you and they will give you a play, whether it be for their family union shirts or whether it be for their friends' businesses, business shirts, they'll give you a play because pre people really appreciate small gestures. All right, so now this picture right here, if you notice, a lot of the images repeat each other. This was last year at the same event and this was this year at the same event. Which is DTG and which is DTF? Right or left? DTG, which one, right or left? Left or right? Left, left or right, right or left? Left, DTG? What do you guys think? I'm training you guys' eyes now. Left, you're pointing this way. Ah, what about, what are, what about you? You're a professional. There's no real way to tell. Ah, there's no real way to tell. Gotta pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> that means I'm good. That's a professional right there. He owns a business. What about you? I agree. I have no idea. <sighs> when you get good, there's no real way to tell. Oh, yeah. This is hard. Oh, this is a difficult yeah. decision to make. No. These are all DTG. These are all DTF with exception of this. Right, you can almost tell a little bit, but these are all DTG, because the year before last, I had no DTF printer. I only had my DTG printer. So these are all DTGs, and these are all the same images, a little bit smaller, but when I got my DTG printer, I just went, oh, I just, I'm gonna print the largest image that can fit on this shirt, and it's gonna sell. And, and surprisingly, what you guys said, it demands a higher price point, this year, I sold my shirts $25 each, and I almost sold out everything, almost. I didn't totally sell out, but I almost sold out everything. This year, I sold my shirts, I think I sold them for 20 or 15, I forget, but I sold out, I sold out. 
It's kind of tough. I made more money with the DTFs, so it's kind of weird. It's tough. Looks better, bigger prints, demands a higher price point, people willing to pay it. But I think the determining factor between the, the first year I did it and the year after was I had, this is my first stunning event. Look at the drop cloth right here. That's part of my tent. That's part of my tent, right? So I wasn't very, I didn't, look at this shirt. It's like, they're all like, they're all, I just, I got everything. I'm put everything on the table. This one was like a little bit more, eh, maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> a little bit better laid out. I got a little drop cloth on my table or something. I got a little thing with my QR code right there. I got a little helpers, little, you know, my son right there, my girlfriend, my mom's there, little helpers. But like, I think the determining factor is why, why I made more money selling a lower price shirt is the fact that I had more experience and I came more prepared the second year. So preparation, it might not be your product, it might be you. So if you're not getting any business and somebody else is selling the same or similar products, like you're selling, don't blame the product. Sometimes it might be you. You have to position yourself in areas where people are looking for those products, all right? So I kind of made this, uh, this talking kind of brief for a reason, because I'm a person that has some real life experience using the machines and talking to them about the machines on my YouTube channel. And I think that the time will be uh, well spent just talking to me and asking me questions. If you guys had any questions that they can't answer, I don't know why they wouldn't be able to answer, but um, I think the time will be uh, more valuable answering some of your questions. So um, that's why I made this presentation kind of short. So with that being said, what method do you, do you think is right for you? Are you as equally as confused now or did you get a little bit of clarity? <laughs> I'm sorry about that, man, but uh, so um, with, with what I told you guys, um, do you have, guys have any questions for me? Like, um, yes. Sorry, I have two A3, Prestige A3 Plus R's from A Print Supply Co. Yeah, I have two of them. Yeah, I was given one to test out and I liked it so much that I went and I found another one. I bought another one because the thing is, another thing that you want to consider in your business when selecting a machine is, you wanna kind of future-proof everything you do, so it makes sense to buy for the future because right, the, the machine worked great, it prints, people like to print, but it was just too slow, so it wasn't efficient. You know, I wanna be able to have something going on over here and do something else over here, and I want those prints to come out a little faster, so rather than to buy a, another machine, I went out and I bought another A3 Plus R, so now I kinda of cut the time in half if I split the job. You can do everything. Anything you're imagining to sell, you can, yes. You can sell the DTF print, you can sell the DTF shirt, you can sell the shirt design file. Okay. So anything you can imagine, there's, there's a market for everything. People sell weird stuff online. You know, <laughs> we're not gonna get into that, but people sell a lot of weird stuff online. You're like, what? You know? So uh, yeah, there's a market for everything. G your I'm sorry? DTF G or DTG printer cost versus your DTF printer. Very valid question. DTF beats out DTG hands down, in my opinion, when it comes to cost for running. Um, even though the finished product demands a higher price point, when you're selling DTF prints, it's just hands down. Like if you're advertising, if people once people know that you have it. It, they, they, those things just fly out the door. You can't print fast enough once people know you have them. So your job is, most businesses, when they start up, most small businesses, they don't see that instant return on investment. So you'll see a lot of used equipment online. Your job as a small business or as an entrepreneur as beginning a startup is to stay in business long enough so that people can know to go to you for that specific product. People don't give themselves enough chance, right? Enough, enough, enough time to, to grow. Like you think once you get a DTF printer or a DTG printer, people are supposed to magically telepathically know that you, you're in business. No, you gotta do some groundwork and it's up to you 
to make yourself your own ambassador. So this is a, even though this is a beautiful dress, if you have a DTG printer, you need wearing your DTG shirts to, adver to take as many chances to advertise as you can. Where'd you get that shirt from? How the heck can I get that shirt, you know? Or contact me if you want to buy, you know, all types of whatever you can think of, that's what you need to be doing because people don't know. People don't know until you tell them. They're not in your house. They don't know you got a DTG or a DTF printer. So you have to stay in business long enough to establish yourself as this is who makes my t-shirts. Oh, by the way, this person makes, and the, and the word pass, the word of mouth passes along. So, so once you start growing, you start off small, little money turns into big money, and before you know it, you need another machine. All right. So, uh, which was more, US and and businessman? Huh? <clears throat> I'm deaf, so. Okay, no problem. I'll talk louder. It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, Just because you're talking low, don't tell me you're deaf because you're talking low to me. Now, now you're making me deaf. <laughs> and, uh, as an influencer and, and a businessman, uh, as me, no businessman yet, and then I confuse now. Selling the brother is like, uh, right now I don't like DTF because it looks like a sticker, it's, it's bright, it's shiny. Mm -hmm. Personal, I don't like shiny stuff. Right. I like DTF, that means DTG. DTG. Because it's not shine, it's like Macy's. Right. What we can do or what we can say about the Tiger one, because if this is Macy's, what is that? Target? <laughs> Target's not bad, by the way. My question you is, save a lot of money in Target. My question is, how many DTF it's not about what I think, it's what I'm gonna sell more. When I'm gonna get more sales, like you just give an example. You took the picture, both. you make more, more you sales. You can get more sales doing both. It's, it, the, the, what determines how many sales you get is you, is how good of a salesperson you are, and how, how accessible you let people know that, you, that you're, you're out there. So people are gonna, Slide number one, there's a whole market online that wants to buy DTF transfers. There's, they're already out there. And I just showed you at that event, at that event that I was at, I sold out of my DTF shirts, even though they were smaller, even though they didn't look as good as the previous year, but I 100% think that the reason why I sold out that year versus the year before when I was selling better looking shirts is because, oh, there's my clicker, is because I didn't have enough experience that first year. It was my first time doing it. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even have a drop cloth for my table. My table was raggedy. I used a piece of my tent. I used a piece of my tent as my, as my, as my table cover. Just because I looked around, I said, well, everybody else's setup looks great. Look, mine has got the legs in there, but they got their name in the front. I'm like, oh, put my tent up, reset out, just laid everything out. And then I learned sometimes you have to give the customers less to choose from because when they see so much, they get overwhelmed. Oh, I like this, well, just like you. Oh, I like this DTF, I like this DTG. Sometimes you have to pull back and just put a little bit out on the table, make it look a little bit better, a little better presentation, and then they'll make up their mind faster. It's an easier sale. So all of that comes. You say you might not be working as DTF as you experience. Oh, wow, that's a good question. Um, right now, DTF is hot. I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, I'm gonna spend ten thousand dollars that I can spend it on something else, just to, to make up a startup business. Before Caterpillar, I was ready to still do DTG because with DTG you can do DTF. What type but of business? Yeah. Thing is, that's a big problem for me because I'm. What what do you what do you want to specialize in? Huh? What do you want to specialize in? What do you primarily want to do? You want to sell shirts? Oh, you were doing screen printing. But so I'm tired of my good, good. So if you're doing screen printing. DTG is the closest thing we got to screen printing. Yeah, that's why I think that Yeah, because you, you got the half tones, you got all that, right? You can take your old, your old images, put them back together, right? And you got the separations, put the separations back together. You can print it out and it'll look, it'll look it's comparable to DT, D, um, screen printing, in my opinion, right? But DTF, maybe not so much. Maybe if you... The money's in, it's hard for me to say, man. The money's both places. What about the cost? Let's, let's say this one, you gave it the same, the same drawing, and the, the DTF and the DTG. Which one costs less? Can we make it so we can make more profit? I would say DTF costs less to produce. Only because the inks, the ink cost is higher in DTG 
And with DTG, when you leave your printer not running, the ink circulates and you have a waste container and the waste container is all of your money going into the waste container. So that's why in my videos, when I make my videos, if you have a DTG printer, when you're not running it, when you don't have like shirts to sell, take your most popular items and just go ahead and print one or two that day just to keep that printer running and put those shirts on standby. So you have to be strategic and you have to, where am I losing money? How can I not lose as much money? Because there's gonna be loss in everything. You're gonna get your DTF printer and you're gonna be terrible at making DTFs. You're gonna burn some DTF sheets, right? You're gonna, you're gonna have to run some film through and you're gonna be like, wow, that's this much amount of film wasted. And, or the DTF is gonna spit some film out before it starts to print and you're gonna waste some, there's gonna be waste. Every, you're gonna have to waste a bunch of money learning how to use both of them. So there's always gonna be waste, no matter what. But ultimately, both methods are profitable. It's up to you to find a business right now. And, but, but that's why I try to emphasize to you guys, you have to position yourself in those places where people are ready to buy. That's the easiest way to make money. Where are people buying this stuff? How can I get there? How can I creatively you know, infiltrate this system and get some of these dollars in my pocket? Maybe that's- What's your RICO cost, your DTF RICO? I, I never, my DTG RICO, I never paid full price for anything. So my first RI 1000, I bought from a guy that was in a situation. I made a whole video about it, $4,500, brand new. How do I know? Because I made a whole video on it. I, I, um, I, I'm always on Facebook Marketplace. I'm always on, um, what's the other thing? Offer up and let go. And at the time, I found a deal. It looked like $7,500, brand new, Rico R1000, red flag to me. I'm gonna check it out anyway. End up getting on the phone after a few conversations. I got the conversations on my video that I made, the guy was just stressed out. He seemed stressed. He was in a situation and I went to pick it up. It was, the whole situation was sketchy, but I put two and two together and I'm like, okay, this guy, his, he doesn't, he used to live here, but he doesn't live here anymore. And I figured out by using my MacGyver skills that his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend said, if you don't get this thing out of here by today, I'm, I'm getting somebody to throw it out. So it's either she was gonna get somebody to throw it out or he had to get rid of it and recoup some, some type of money. So he had, uh, at the time it was a little bit over. He, he bought an $18,000 package. And I know that because when I contacted him, when I, when I went and saw it, I took a picture of the serial number. I'm okay, I'll be right back, I'm going to the bank to get the money, right? Because I had, all, prior to me driving there, I had already negotiated $4,500 for it. I didn't come with $4,500 in my pocket. Took a picture of serial number, looked at the printer, saw that there was no ink in the lines, the lines were dry, there was no ink residue. I'm like, this is brand new. Made him powered on, I'm like, whoa. All right, I'll be right back with the cash. On the way driving, I contacted Rico, gave him the serial number. They said, oh no, this is not ours, it was bought from Racoma. I called Racoma, because I have Racoma embroidery machines. I called them and they said, this guy just bought this machine two weeks ago or something like that. He bought the most expensive package, it was $18,000. Why is he selling it? I'm like, I don't know, uh, he's, I don't, I, I don't care. Like, is it, is it legit, can I buy it? He's, they're like, yeah, so the loan lives with him, right? The machine is paid for, they got their money, I got my printer. And how much was your DTF printer? My DTF printer? Okay, so my DTF printer was free 99, the first one that I got because I influence people on how to use the machines and I teach them intricately so they're confident enough to make the purchases. So um, they sent me one of the uh, A3 plus R's. And the second one that I got was from somebody who had a faulty unit. And I played with the unit long enough to be confident enough to look on the inside and figure out this is easy to fix. So I got it for a trade. I traded one of my professional video cameras for the broken DT DTF printer. I bought a motherboard. Uh, clean the print head, and it works so fine. What's a third of a price to start in DTF versus DTG? I mean, not for you, but it depends on which one you're going with. Because remember, if you want efficiency, then you're going to buy a bigger DTF machine. So now you're looking at the same price. But the price of the um, F2100 has gone down significantly from years ago. So it's a ten thousand dollar machine now. That's a significant discount. I don't know. Maybe they're coming out with something new. I don't know. But both methods are great. Both methods can make money. 
But right now, I'm not gonna lie, every, if somebody tells you different, they're lying to you. DTF is hot right now, especially online. With what I do, DTF is like the thing right now. DTF is the thing right now. But once again, don't think that you're gonna just buy a DTF machine and get a bunch of money. Because unless you live online and you have a following or something like that, if you're just a regular person that works a regular job, you're gonna have to do some work with either one to get customers. So it, it, would, it would be, I'll be, you're not gonna instantly just make a, a ton of money unless you're a super marketing genius, right? So you're gonna have to put in the work and that's the hardest part. The first hardest part is to learn how to work the machine efficiently, properly, learn how to pre-treat machines properly, uh, shirts properly so you can produce high quality prints Learn how to, you know, well, this is kind of easy to be honest with you, but you do have to adjust the color profile, but it's just a matter of what I do. I shrink down my image real small, adjust it a little bit, print, doesn't look good, adjust a little bit more, you know, it, it, and it, it makes sense. It's going to say yellow. You want your yellows to be lighter or you want your yellows to be darker? Blue, you want your blues to be lighter? It's really easy, but people are like, oh my gosh, what are all these buttons? What are all these knobs? It's really easy when you look at the stuff. Like they try to make it, but you can't make it like, it's hard to figure out how to make a software so, so user friendly, but it is kind of like, when, once you figure it out, you'll look back and be like, this is silly easy, right? But, and it's really that easy. If it's not printing out like the image that you got from your customer, you just adjust the slider, Try again, adjust the slider, try again. And that's gonna be money lost, but you have to if you wanna deliver a high quality product that they're like, oh my gosh, this print looks great. So, sorry, it's up to you which one you want. I, you know what I do? Just pick one. If you like both of them, if you still want the other one, later on when your business calls for it, buy the other one. I got a whole bunch of stuff in my studio. And guess what? They, they're all solutions. What your job is if you wanna make money, I, I know I told you guys you should focus on one thing and you really should, but if you wanna make money, you gotta give yourself and your business every opportunity to say yes when somebody asks you, hey, can you do this? Yes, yeah, hey, can you do that? Yes. Guess what else I could do? I could do embroidery. Guess what else I could do? I, give yourself every opportunity to get those dollars in your pocket. Why? Because if you got 10 grand in a bank account, I don't know last time we checked, but last time I checked, your bank is not giving you a return better than you can make selling a $25 shirt. You spend 10 grand right now, you print out something that looks like this, you can go out on the street and get $25. You leave that 10 grand in your bank account, end of the month, what are you gonna get? Depreciation, that's what you're gonna get. So it makes more sense to buy something that's going to give you a return on your investment. Even if you sell one shirt a month, you're still getting a better return than that money sitting in your bank account. Unless you know something I don't know. All right, any more questions? So, we're looking at the A3, small. Mm -hmm. the, the R2 or the A4? A4, sorry. A4, okay. So, I'm not in a position where I want to lay out the money for a big machine. Yeah. But it's limited to size. Okay. So, like, this is pretty much as big as it go if I keep the image all together. Yeah. Obviously, I can split it and make uh, different sections and make my image bigger. Right. Quality. But my question is, if I had a more complicated image and I needed to split the image down a seam, down the middle of it, if I accidentally overlayer it, it's it in the field? <sighs> I've never done that. I, 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 in my, on my channel, I always tell people that I'm not gonna give anybody advice on something that I don't know, right? I would, I don't know, I don't know. But if I were in your, in your shoes, I would consider taking advantage of 0% financing. And if your credit is not good enough, then I don't know if you have a business that you can put it under, or if you consider starting a business and, and waiting a few, a month or two to establish your business credit or three months to establish your business credit so they will approve you for 0% financing. There's a few tricks that you can use. That's a whole nother ball game um, to establish your business credit. But, um, you know, it's up to you. It's up to you. You know, th this is great for left chest prints. So maybe you might want to specialize in left chest prints and people that want, Im that don't mind images that are not as large as, the, as, the, as, as this, but, you know, if you go lengthwise, you know, 
You could also, businesses, guess what? What you're, what you're not considered, you guys printed out the wrong image, by the way. You guys should be, for that specific printer, you guys should be advertising so-and-so lawn care company because you can go long, right? You can go long and still take out the whole front chest, but you're trying to print out images that would look better with a bigger thing. But if you printed out something long and turn it, you print it horizontal, you can get two 16 inch lettering side by side and you don't have that problem anymore because it looks right. It takes up the whole width of the shirt because you're going long ways. So you gotta be creative. See how I mean it's up to you to use your equipment. So there's no excuse with any device. The only limitation is you and your creativity, right? I was, I was, not a bad, not a bad decision. I was just wondering if you ever tried that before. I've never, I've tried it with white toner, but I've never tried it with DTF because I don't have a small DTF. But like I said, and like I just told you, like, you know. That, that, that image, I would have split up and done multiple sections. And just yeah. The actual main image itself is the one that's hard to split. Mm -hmm. or, or you can just specialize in a specific type of print, right? If you specialize in something, then you can focus on a specific customer, right? And you won't have to spread yourself so. Look at her image on her shirt. You turn that sideways, you can print that image. Yeah. You don't have a problem. There's, 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 there's a machine for every budget and there's a, a, a solution for your problem. Your problem is find out who is about to buy a DTF machine, take their phone number, right? And when people call you for this, you call them and get the DTF made that way you don't have to tell that customer or piece images together. So do something else when you get those larger orders so you don't have to piece together the image. DTFs are not that expensive. I know you wanna keep as much money as you in your pocket, but you have to do things that um, make your end quality, your, your finished product, something that a customer will come back for, right? So certain things you can do, like that image, turn it sideways, you can print it. But if you gotta split something in half, I'd recommend just buy some DTFs for that specific order with, some, with, some, with somebody that has a, a larger size printer. There's ways to do everything. Did you guys know that you don't even have to, you know, people are starting whole businesses and they don't have any of this equipment. You can just go to alnayway.com and buy my DTF. <laughs> Room temperature. Uh, there has to be a certain you know, temperature. Uh, like They're going to tell you exactly what your what your um, humidity has to be in the room, so for your machine to operate at an optimal. It's more so, to, in my opinion, it's more so with DTG than DTF. That's why I said DTG is higher maintenance, because with my DTF printer, I don't have those. I I, I don't care. I don't. Just, it just sits there in whatever, whatever temperature. It's cold. It's hot. It, it prints. DTG, I find that DTG enjoys this environment, a nice warm environment, right? It's ink and the ink solidifies. Um, if, it's, if it's cold, it's hard to print. So you have to keep the humidity up, but I like to tell people just keep the room warm. It's like a baby, put a blanket around it, put a, you, it requires some stuff, right? And you, it's, it's up to you to learn what stuff it requires so that it can take care of your business. So these are all things that we have to learn. I didn't, I didn't take a temperature gauge sorry, when I went. I just know that in summer, in the winter time when I got my DTG printer, I would print like four images and then it would kind of print funny. Then I had to wipe off the print heads. And then all of a sudden the weather got warm and I'm printing 40 shirts back to back to back. I'm like, oh, it just likes warm weather. <laughs> you know, I had it downstairs in my basement. I'm like, it just likes warm weather. So that's the best way I can explain it. I didn't check the humidity. I didn't, every, everything that they tell you, sorry, Everything they tell you, I do the opposite. When I get these machines, I try to break them. I try to, I try to break them because I gotta make videos and I wanna, I try to abuse these machines so I can tell people what to watch out for. And I abuse the A3 plus R and it will not die. I print, I print, I print. They say it's not meant for production. 
I stay overnight and I print, I print, I print, I print, I ink, print, 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 it don't break. And if it does break, it's easy to repair. But mine hasn't broken. I'm confident to unscrew the printhead and clean it off. I even made a video on how to unscrew the printhead to wipe it off. Maybe I shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, it, 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 these DTF printers, they don't break. DTG, a little harder, a little harder, a little more difficult, you know? But it's, it's tough, it's tough. All right, guys, uh, that's it. I'm being told that I'm out of time, so. If you guys want to hear from me anymore, go ahead to pull out your phones. A Dub Productions on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. So that was pretty cool, guys. I had a good time doing it. Everything flowed really good. And I did another presentation too. So when I get that footage, I will post it on here. But enjoy this interview. I mean, this speaking, I mean, this presentation while it's up here, because I'm not sure. I, I probably might take it down. I'm not sure yet, but enjoy and this weekend uh we are going to the u.s open i'm probably going tomorrow so stay tuned for that i'll have some footage from the u.s open to try to give you guys an experience of what it's like to be at the u.s open so stay tuned for that footage okay see you guys this weekend peace turn up that crank it up while listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best baby